We're at Gamescom 2016, catching up on Dreadnought, and I haven't seen it in a little while. What, can you first uh, introduce us, what, what is Dreadnought and, and what's been going on lately? Um, so Dreadnought is a game about giant spaceships. Like we wanted to create a game where you actually get to fly the big ships, everything from a more Millennium Falcon size to a Battlestar Galactica sized ship. There's not that many out there. It's a class-based game, so you have five different classes that create a large variety of gameplay, and it's super intense, but also slow. It's a basically both at the same time, super cinematic, super intense, but it's well-paced. And wh what's been happening lately with the game? Oh geez, lately we've been in our closed beta, getting it in front of players, trying to figure out what they like, what they don't like, making sure that we're gathering metrics on the game, seeing what they're doing, comparing that versus what they're saying, and then coming up with the best solutions to solve some of the problems that they're having and make a better game. That is a very general description of it. What, what kind of feedback were you getting as you, as you let players in? Um, pretty much that. Like the, the intensity of it uh, is something that players really like. They come in because it's so fresh. Um, in essence, Dreadnought actually plays a lot like a shooter with some other elements mixed in, so people feel at home. But they're attracted to, this, uh, to the topic because there's not that many games out there, and once they start playing it, um, just the tactical depth of it, the ships that they can create, uh, all those fantasies that they can relive from TV shows and movies, they really enjoy that. We were finding that they really loved the game itself. The core game was fun, engaging. Um, they liked the tactical combat. But one thing we wanted to expand a bit more on was with the metagame itself. And it seems like we're doing a little bit of work on that lately. So the metagame in terms of the multiplayer, like how people can explore that and so on and so forth. Um, no, more like the progression and how you actually unlock things. So um, we wanted to give players more, <coughs> more agency. So far it was more of a linear progression where people got stuff unlocked that they might not have liked. And now we want to give people choices um, like to choose their own path because it really fits the fantasy of being a captain more that you can actually choose what you want to do next. Mm. And uh, yeah, th that is interesting because that also creates that sort of meta where, where people have to explore and, and make choices and maybe... Are you going into it with that sort of notion of, of that there's going to be many, many right choices or what kind of... Yeah. <coughs> in, in Dreadnoughts, it's all about variety. Like, again, you can do Cloak or you can do Blink Warp. It's just a very different playstyle. Um, uh, creating a different fantasy, like being more like a bird of prey or being more like a ship that dances around bigger ships. So there is no right choice in your progression. It's just the way you want to play the game and the, the way that you want to feel. I would imagine that such a design change also puts a lot of challenges in terms of balance, game balance. It's is that correct? Oh, always, yeah. Anytime we make any changes, we have to get that in front of players and see how it actually reacts. We, you know, we play it, we get as many people on it as possible, and then we put it out there and find out that some of the choices we made aren't exactly the right ones. Mm -hmm. So we gather that feedback, and we make the adjustments and changes accordingly. And yeah, on top of that, you're, you're completely right, of course. Like, it is a lot of work. Um, in general, Dreadnought, with the amount of customization that we have, is a super challenging task for our system designers. But uh, Tockel and Daniel, they're they actually were super happy when we announced it because they liked the challenge. Yeah, and they're amazing at it. I mean, those, those guys are, are particularly good about it. They play the game all the time. It's like they live it, breathe it. So usually they're pretty darn good about it anyway. And um, when the player confirms that it's great, when it confirms that they're wrong, they're actually happy as well because then they can make it better. Interesting. I, I do recall when we talked last <laughs> time that the st there's also a campaign, a story that, that you're working on. What's the, because we've, basically touched now on the sort of on the what many people consider the main course which is yeah. you know multiplayer and, and that but w what kind of plans do you have for that um, nothing that we can like definitely announce yet it's a bit of a tricky one as you say like the changes to the progression system actually put a lot of priority on that um, so on on the other side we are not as far ahead as we want it to be because we first wanted to get core gameplay progression all that really engaging and and work and everything else we will expand on later but it's still it's still in the making it's still happening right because because <laughs> it is it is a, an, an engaging universe uh, what, what can you tell us of, of, of the universe itself oh my gosh you know this I'm gonna d completely defer this to Peter because quite honestly he's the master of this I know quite a bit about it myself but I'm really not gonna attempt to try to take this away from him <laughs> and and same here I think our marketing guys would not like us to actually start talking too much about it now it's, yeah, it's a tricky one I mean yeah what 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 we said so far is the like we have, we have a lot of inspirations from Firefly and we have this 
very serious universe that also has a slightly humorous touch to it. Um, we are kind of a also based on the customization that we have, like being able to create all the ships in very different tonalities. You can to, uh, can be the very militaristic, like straightforward battle star, but you can also go a bit more space piratey in a way. Um, we actually have to create a background that is quite rich and diverse, where you're not locked into a certain military faction, for example. Interesting. So I'm spotting eight computers here in the room with us. Uh, what's the significance of that? Um, so yeah, here at Gamescom for the first time we're actually presenting a new game mode which we are testing at the moment and we wanted to increase the player count so so far and on show floor as well uh, we have five versus five and in here we actually have eight versus eight so um, eight computers here playing against eight guys in Houston. Um, the new game mode is called Onslaught and idea being to act even give a bigger sense of like battle, uh, uh, epic battles. Uh, 8v8 on, on the one hand, but also having AI ships with you in there. So it's more like a fleet feel. Like you get in with the capital ships, but there's also mid-sized, smaller ships, really small ships, and they actually contribute to the outcome of the game mode. But it's, it's two sides, it's not like a neutral faction that's AI driven or... No, it's not like a three-faction battle. There's so much going on already in Dreadnought. If there, if there was a third faction that would like mess things up in between, it would be... Interesting, actually. I'll think about it. <laughs> yes, that sounds actually good. Yeah. <laughs> no. well, well, credit me if you do come up with that. If we actually do that, like add a third and fourth faction in there, AI controlled, yeah, we'll definitely credit you. What I would like to follow up on that with that is, uh, like, how would you say that changes? Because it seems pretty drastic, like mm -hmm. three more, more capital ships on each side it seems to escalate things quite, quite dramatically. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's, there's multiple reasons for it and why we're testing it at the moment is um, we, 5v5 is really great for strong team play in terms of 8v8, um, like not making new players feel that they actually have to engage in capital ship battles. Um, 8v8 felt like a good way to go so that, you, that you can actually disengage from the core battle and fight those smaller AI ships, get to know the game get into the game and then re-engage into those battles without being forced to actually function in a team like right, right from the get-go. Mm. So, so a good thing to have when that sort of open beta comes around. Yeah, it's a um, normal thing. Like We want players when they actually get into the game to just have our like straightforward pop culture experience where they get into the game, they have the shooter controls, they learn how it plays and then actually get more and more tactical as they evolve as players. You, you mentioned, of course, the close beta, and that is a that is big deal. What, what's the rollout? What's the, what's the roadmap ahead with the game, and what's, what's going on? Oh, wow. I get another big question. Another tough one. This one is actually um, pretty simple and straightforward when you think about it, but it's uh, actually hard when you actually do it. So right now we're working on some major changes to the metagame itself, as Peter discussed, with the, the progression system. And we want to get that in front of players as soon as we can. We're really uh, working hard to get that out. When we do, we'll put it in front of players and see what they like and see what they don't like. Um, and it'll sit there for a while, right? We're, we're hoping that it goes quickly so we can get to move on to the next stages faster, but sometimes it takes a little longer than we expect and, and we won't want to rush it. So um, when exactly? Uh, when it's ready. <laughs> no, but I, we expect that it's going to be fairly soon. The game is making progress. Uh, we've been in closed beta for a while, and we would like to uh, complete that stage and move, move beyond that, and I think it's uh, coming sooner than later. Because that is the, the, almost like bigger than actual launch when that sort of when that closed thing goes away and anyone can jump in and, and try the game. Totally. And, and I mean, we are looking forward to it as much as our players, like really. We want to get this out, have more people play it, have, have more people enjoy it, um, get more feedback on it. Um, so we are definitely looking forward to this. And yeah, I mean, we're communicating fall at the moment as, a, as, a, as an open beta date. Like we don't want to be too precise about it because, yeah, as Frank said, like uh, things can go wrong, things can go right. We don't know how, how long they're actually going to take and how long it takes to actually get this really perfect. But um, this is what we are currently aiming for, so. and we really want to get that out there. <laughs> we, we do our best to make yeah. it happen as quick as possible. We know the fans want to play this game, and we, and we want them to play the game, so <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting there. We're really getting we're there. <laughs> we're close. All right, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. All systems go.